Hello. In this next part four of our video series on Flutterflow with Google AI, we'll be using Firebase extensions to add AI semantic search into our application. As a reminder, we have a Flutterflow application that's powered by Firebase, which is really in itself powered by Google Cloud. In previous parts of this video series, we used event-based serverless functions to do text generation with leading large language models and computer vision in our Flutterflow app. We're going to extend that today by installing an extension from the Firebase Extensions Hub, Semantic Search with Vertex AI. This is going to allow us to search the descriptions in our travel app and with an easy, low-code approach. Now, just to remind everyone of what our app looks like, let's go ahead and open this up in test mode and we'll navigate the app. The app has AI-generated descriptions for various travel destinations, destination images, and clever AI-generated captions for those images. It's actually quite simple, with just two pages, the Destinations page and the Favorites page, where all our treasured spots are listed. Ready to take this to the next level? Let's jump over to the Semantic Search with Vertex AI extension on Firebase Hub and get it installed in the Firebase console. Our project awaits us, and we'll stroll through these pages together. Now, bear in mind, this adventure does involve some cloud resources that come with a price tag of about $3 per day. You're billed by the minute, though, so if you follow along and then immediately delete the resources, your cost impact should be very small. Also, if you're following along, you might find it useful to review earlier parts of this video series, which we'll link to in the video description. Our new extension is using a smattering of different Google Cloud services. To illustrate this, let's say we search Event Arc in our Google Cloud project. This service is one of a few that Flutterflow will be using. These are just your everyday Google Cloud services powering your app and Firebase extensions. Nothing weird or custom going on behind the scenes. Watch closely, this extension will automatically generate a bunch of different cloud functions. Remember how we created these manually in the earlier parts of our video series? This time, we're letting the system handle it for us. We'll go ahead and allow Firebase storage before stepping into production mode. This, in turn, will set up a Google Cloud storage bucket in our project and a central component for various parts of this extension. Want to see this bucket come to life? Head over to the Cloud Storage page in the console. Once there, you'll notice various buckets have magically appeared. Clicking Next, we also need to handle some permissions. Let's give access to some Google Cloud Managed Service agents before tying this up with the last bit of extension configuration. Let's navigate to the Firestore page in our Flutterflow app to Places. This is the information that we'll be indexing for this extension. Our collection's name is fittingly Places. You can remind yourself of the data structure and style by heading back to the Google Cloud Console to Firebase, then Firestore, and voila. We'll choose to index the destination descriptions, just one single field in our documents for now. Comma-separated values could be used if we need to index multiple fields. Backfilling is up next, which means generating embeddings for all the documents in the current collection, the historic data. From here, we can pick from a duo of methods for embeddings, with the palm option being the most cutting edge. Distance measure types are a whole other ball game, and we won't delve deeply into that today, but we do have other videos tackling embeddings that you can find linked in the video description below. Let's stick with the simple and efficient default of the dot product.
When returning the similar descriptions for semantic search, we can choose the search results count. For demonstration's sake, let's keep the infrastructure small to reduce Google Cloud costs. We have some intriguing options for TPUs or GPUs under accelerators, but that'll be overkill for our foundational setup. Last stop, folks, the Cloud Functions location. Ready to install the extension? Do note it may take a couple of minutes. And now our extension provisioning is complete, presenting us with the friendly Get Started page. Do remember, we already have our Firestore collection in development test mode, so we do not need this step and can dive right into the action. Are you ready to try this out in our Google Cloud Console? All right then, let's crack on. The Cloud Shell at the top right is your go-to button for this task. As it comes to life, it works as your playground to run this function. And while we're waiting for it to load fully, here's a fun detour, the Cloud Functions page. You'll find all our functions, those handcrafted by us in previous videos, and the handful of additional functions created by the new extension. Now the real challenge is running the query function to get semantic search results. Here we go. We might need a string here. Looks like we're facing a roadblock. No index endpoint for our matching engine system. So let's inspect our matching engine setup, which has recently been rebranded to Vector Search. It's still under construction. It can actually take upwards of 20 or 30 minutes for this to finish. For the infrastructure provisioning, we can have a peek behind the curtain. Through this extension, you can snoop around the source code on GitHub and uncover mysteries like the parameters documentation and the cloud functions code. You can also spot those cloud functions in the cloud console. Everything is in there, from the creation of the index through to deployments and data orchestration. It's all on show via event-based cloud functions orchestration. For a quick demo, let's head to Cloud Functions and check out the Create Index function. You know we've succeeded when the log reads Index Creation Initiated. Nestled within the service, you'll notice a heap of other functions. For instance, when the index is created and deployed, several parallel functions spring to life and anchor the entire orchestration and provisioning process for our semantic search. Let's navigate further. Say we go to on index deployed and dig deeper into our event arc triggering. Here, when we see the right audit logs, the function snaps into action, recognizing that we've created or deployed an index. Since this trigger requires an audit logs event, let's verify that our audit logs are turned on for the Vertex AI service. Aha, we need both read and write data operations for the audit log. Admittedly, our data read-write setup is probably noted somewhere in our semantic search documentation. Yep, found it, our cloud audit logging requirements for the Vertex AI API. We could have just thoroughly read the documentation and done that from the beginning, but what fun would that be? We'd have no opportunity to showcase the functions, triggering, and source code concepts. Now that we've updated the audit logging, let's do a quick check-in to verify which of our cloud functions here are heavily reliant on the audit logs. I'm just going to do a brief search for this audit log phrase as a trigger. If we come up empty, that tells us the cloud function in question isn't tied to audit logs. Our search turns up two tasks, on index created and on index deployed, but it seems none of the others are linked to the audit log. That narrows down our focus to reconfiguring these two tasks.
The next question, of course, is how can we best trigger these two workflows retroactively? Well, one of the simplest ways is simply to recreate the index. If we switch our attention to the create index trigger, we'll note it's activated only when we have a status of done. What if we have other backfill statuses? It won't kick into action yet. So we'll tweak our Firestore database status, swap it for a different one, and finally revert to done. Let's embark on this together. In the depths of our Firestore database, we'll explore the semantic search extension until we find our tasks. There, we'll change our status from done to something temporary before switching it back to done. This is a bit hacky, but should trigger our functions. Undoubtedly, we'll have to exercise a bit of patience as we wait for both the index creation and index deployment, but those should proceed smoothly now. Once it's up, we'll see our endpoint link and know that our cloud functions were successfully triggered. We see our deployed vector search, a promising sign. Ready to run the test again? Suppose that I'm dreaming of visiting a place in Egypt, somewhere chocked full of fascinating ancient history. Now, if we focus in on the nearest neighbor right at the top, we take that ID, find it in our database, and see that it's the Pyramids of Giza. Good stuff. Tracking down another example to its source in our data set, there it is. Right at the top, graciously pointing us towards Buckingham Palace. Witness the beauty of natural language queries, no keywords, string processing, or facet-based systems required. For our grand finale, we're going to use this in our Flutterflow application. For the sake of time, we've done this setup beforehand, but worry not, we'll walk through every aspect of the configurations for you to easily catch up. We'll also provide all code in the video description. Most of our wizardry here will be in the action flow for this search button. Let's roll up our sleeves and open up this editor. First things first, we'll retrieve our nearest neighbor semantic search results from an API call. We'll define it as a post to our query index cloud function endpoint, which we can simply plug from the trigger tab, specifically the trigger URL. Just like when we conducted this operation in the console, we'll need to have some query flexibility in the request body when calling this endpoint. So we'll use a dynamic parameterized query. For the cherry on top, it's helpful to have a JSON path defined in the API call, which will give us just the document IDs for our search results rather than the rather large raw response. Remember the query parameter that we discussed? We'll get its value from the search field in the application. Then we're going to channel that output to a variable. Provided the API call is a success, we'll secure the results in our application state. However, do we really need the full list of semantic search results back? Perhaps we might be more interested in the single most relevant item, or maybe a top three. Just to keep things focused, let's stick to one result for now. We'll be stashing the document IDs in an app state variable rather than the bulky raw data structure returned from our function. We achieve this magic with the JSON path that we previously set up. To make things easier for you, we've included this JSON path in the video description so you can simply copy and paste. Last but not least, we have a custom action. If we break down this custom action, it's fairly straightforward. 
we're just transforming our document IDs from the application state into associated destination names from our Firestore instance. So essentially, it's just mapping IDs into names. Then we're going to preserve this in a separate application state variable. That's all we're doing here, and the code can be copy-pasted from the GitHub repo in the video description. All right, folks, that's our action workflow, which is arms to use this search field and search button. Now all we need to do is utilize the precious results in our list view. By adding a filter to our backend query, we ensure that the name is in our query document names, our app state variable. So are you ready to see all this magic unfold? Let's put this into action and witness the incredible final result. All right, moment of truth. We put in our query in the search field and then click to search. And we get our search result back, a single search result in this case. It returned Petra, which is not necessarily in India, but let's try a more verbose example. With these AI semantic search systems, the longer and more descriptive the query, the better. And that one gave us a really nice result, Buckingham Palace. Well, it looks like we're getting pretty good results. And remember, this is a semantic search. It's AI-based, and it's not using keywords or other primitive search mechanisms, but rather a powerful text embeddings-based method instead. Thank you very much for watching, and please enjoy responsibly.